Talked to bye week. Um, you know, we had a chance to visit with you guys briefly in the middle of it, but uh, to close out the week, we always kind of balance that between obviously getting our current roster, getting a jump on our opponent, and also uh, a lot of personnel driven stuff. So, uh, had some good meetings, uh, had some good recruiting trips. Uh, we got in two really, really good days of just kind of Illinois versus Illinois, and then got in two uh, advanced days, uh, including last night on Purdue. So, to have that walking into Tuesday's practice tomorrow, uh, hopefully a little bit ahead of schedule. Um, uh, obviously, this weekend with the Hall of Fame, uh, congratulations to um, obviously uh, uh, um, you know Derek was with it, was a great player here when I was here or when I uh, played in Coastal League, and then Robert Holcomb will actually be our guest captain. Um, so we're really uh, excited to be around him. He's actually a high school coach in Arizona now, so it's kind of been fun to reconnect with him. Uh, uh, I know he's excited to get here and be a part of it as well. So. Um, I thought our guys, uh, uh, you know, came in, flew around on Sunday night. Uh, we went out on the lights here for about an hour, and, and really, uh, um, you know, the part that you always look at during the bye week is trying to get you guys healthy, but also trying to get you guys fresh. We played five five games. It took um, basically all those games. If you even look at uh, uh, Eastern Illinois, we kept the starters in all the way through the first three quarters, and, and uh, uh, Central Michigan was really a four quarter game. So then, obviously, the three. Uh, ranked opponents were, were tough battles all the way from um, start to finish. So to play five games to get out of it pretty healthy, uh, I think is a, is a good sign. And then obviously to get some uh, opportunity to get their legs back last week, we'll, we'll see exactly where we are going in this week. But I, I thought our guys accomplished that. Tank said the guys were great in the weight room. Uh, and we'll just uh, uh, kind of play this week out as it goes. Looks like it's going to be a beautiful day on Saturday, 2.30. Um, uh, obviously a rivalry game, uh, a, a battle for the for the cannon, um, all, all things from A to Z. but. I think one thing this group has done a really good job is just focusing on the, on the now one and no mentality. Um, uh, throughout the course of the first five weeks, has got us to where where we are today, and I don't think anything will change. So excited about the uh, opportunity to play Purdue this week. Without opening up questions. Right, Aaron said we don't have it yet. We can't. Never had it, it. Never saw it. Never touched it. Never smelled it. <laughs> <laughs> so with Purdue struggling, obviously, how much does that help? Just take hey, this is the goal. I know one and all. I, I understand players. the question, but like I, I think when you're dealing in the Big Ten, um, there's no greater indication than this past weekend. Um, you know, I'd, uh, on Sunday, I you know I've always said I always take a minute to kind of look back at college football, and I couldn't um, um, afford to pass up on the opportunity to have three ranked teams, three top ten teams uh, that. Uh, obviously had uh, a setback over the weekend in, in all three of those teams that kind of had premier wins, right? That um, uh, And then um, just the way it all kind of played out, all of them uh, were uh, teams that were at home on the you know, the other team, uh, the uh, team that uh, other than the Michigan game, um, um, uh, just, a, just a lot of different things that factored into it. I did look at, you know, three common factors of all of those games. Uh, all three lost the turnover margin. All three of them almost had double digit penalties. Um, obviously we can't channel. Uh, uh, see what other teams do for penalties, mental errors, and or, I'm sorry, MAs and MEs. But um, you know, I just wanted to make those guys understand those three games uh, and, and, and um, you know how they played out. And, and you know, I did say I made this point to our guys. Listen, uh, if if I can, I always everybody always asks me for the year, coach. What's the definition of a successful season, right? And I think uh, unequivocally, as a head coach, even when I was a coordinator, even when I was a head coach. What you want to do is get through a season without regrets, right? Without um, a moment of where I wish I would have done this, or wish I would have done that. Um, you know, in, in all my years of doing it, I haven't been able to do that yet. But I would say through five games, there's obviously some things that uh, in every one of those five games, you, you would always go back and correct or do this a little bit better or do that a little different. But I have loved their approach. I love their demeanor. I love their attitude. I love their fight. I love all of the things that in my, in my opinion, are the things that go into being successful on game day. And, you know, we're a 4 and one team uh, that's trying to go 1-0 and this week, but uh, I think there's some teams that, you know, as you go back and look at it, they probably regret what they maybe had done that day or, or the way that they had played or the way they approached the game. And uh, right now I don't have that regret in any of our, 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 our phases at overall. What have you seen from Purdue Brett through the first five, and obviously their coordinator change as well? Well, uh, obviously they, you know, started off uh, very positive. I think the Oregon State game, uh, you know, they were very um, uh, productive offensively as well, scored a lot of points and, and did a lot of things. Obviously the uh, uh, Notre Dame game is, you know, kind of treat that as kind of its own little unique entity. Uh, I think just, uh, I think everybody's been a part of those moments when games get away from them as, as it plays out. So. Uh, obviously, a lot of respect for, for uh, Ryan and his staff. I know a lot of those guys on a personal level, so I, I think I know what this game is going to mean to them and, and to their players. And 
you know, I think you can take in when you go into Big Ten play, not just because we're playing for a Canada Trophy or a rivalry or two games that we're guaranteed to play every year. I think this is a Big Ten versus a Big Ten, and you got to uh, come to play every weekend and, and prepare that way, and, and hopefully the best team wins on Saturday. In terms of the tight end position, Brett, when you knew you weren't going to have Cole, you, you I know Henry's been going through yeah. some things. Have you really been really pleased with what you've gotten out of Tanner and even Carson in the last couple I, of weeks? I, I go back to, uh, you know, when we decided to take Tanner, I just – I remember seeing him on film. Now he had, he's a kid that had some Wisconsin roots. There was just something that jumped out to me. Um, uh, knew some common coaches that had crossed paths with him and, and just talked about who he was, demeanor-wise, attitude. He came on his visit, and I'm like, okay, this kind of fits our DNA. And then just what he did well, since he's been here, just the evolution of his body, his strength, speed, development. Uh, uh, I thought even last year, you know, uh, you know, it was really evident that um, you know Tip was our best, you know, tight end. Um, not only in line, but also kind of all the things we did, but really wanted to, if I could have one thing over, I, you know, I wish that, you know, we probably had a better compliment to tip last year just because we played so much 11 personnel, didn't allow us to get in other personnel groupings. Tanner wasn't quite there yet, but last spring he began to see it. I remember Ben Miller coming up to me halfway through and he goes, hey, uh, we were spot on uh, with that evaluation. I think he's just a guy that's going to do a lot of really good things for us. So yeah, Tanner's been extremely impressive. I think uh, uh, Goda has been a, a, a guy that, you know, just continues to uh, show up uh, a little bit limited with a hamstring, but even during fall camp and where he's at today, Henry Boyer getting him back full strength. He had a really big week last week. Um, uh, you know, he's a big body that can run and does some really good things. Uh, so I, I've been I've been stressing and impressing him uh, really the last three weeks to, uh, to make a step forward. So I, I like that room overall, and there's a couple other guys uh, that have added in that room as well. We hear you talk about good teams to third things, stop the run, run. What, what do you feel like you guys are That's at? It's a third. <laughs> Cover kicks. There you go. I was a little bit. But what do you feel like you guys have those first two things through five games? Yeah, um, big point of emphasis, right? Uh, um, you know, when you're establishing a run game, uh, first off, I think you got to have your identity, right? Like, what do you want to do? How do you want to do it? What personnel groupings? Um, but, you know, I, I, I know um, going into the Penn State game, coming out of it, you know, from a pure running back standpoint, I. I think Caden Fagan, Hayden Lawfrey, Josh McCray, and then uh, throw in the X Factor of, of Khalil. Like those four guys are very talented players, right? And what we got to do is put them in a position to let their their skills show up, right? And and uh, offensively, uh, I think you know one of the things that um, uh, has been not a challenge, but but one of the things that we've struggled with through the first five games is being consistent in the throw game and the run game, and and that was a main task that I went very uh, to go back and look and with Barton with that and step and and Dish is just kind of figure out how we can kind of put this thing all together, be more consistent um, uh, in, in our approach. And then from a run defense, you know, I, I, I knew Penn State was going to, they had those two good running backs. They had uh, the, the skill set of their offense coordinator, um, you know, talked about we need to play good run defense. And obviously we did at times, but not near as good enough to uh, be successful. I think the key thing for, for them was running, they're running for 240 and we're running for the numbers that, that we did. You know, obviously the sack yardage came into play a little bit, but, um, Obviously, the discrepancy and able to run the football is a big part of that of that game. That, um, Penn State game aside, deep, defense obviously improved quite a bit over the first five games. What, can you point to two or three things where you think has helped turn turn that around this year defensively? Um, well, I, I think first off, uh, you know, um, the, 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 not to overstate the obvious, but um, you know, Aaron is a second year coordinator. I, I think I made, even though statistically. Um, my first year to my second year uh, wasn't as good statistically. I think I learned some things in that second year better than my first year. So just to learn every coordinator I've been associated with, they've always been better in year two than year one. Um, like there's just this process that you uh, have to go through that uh, is very unique to, to uh, that moment. So I think Aaron's maturity there, but also his support staff, I think uh, without a doubt on defense uh, uh, between Clint, Archie, and and Corey, those three guys have brought a lot to the table that have helped Aaron grow. Uh, and just the chemistry in that room, um, you know, Terrence Jamison and Aaron have been together a long time, known each other as players. So it all starts in the chemistry of that environment. I would tell you that I think, um, you know, even, you know, we're playing a game where, where we're, we're seeing a guy that, you know, the success of what he had here really parlayed into the opportunity that he got at Purdue. And I, I think when I go back and think about all those things, all he talked about was the chemistry in that environment, defensive staff room. Uh, that made that moment come through. So, um, you know, listen, that there's a lot that goes into players and, and schemes, but if you're, if you're not together in, the, in that coaching staff um, with the way you respectively approach offense, defense, and special teams, you're, you're not going to have success on the field. So I think that's the biggest one. The second one, 
Uh, I think you know we lost some really good players, but uh, the the development and the emergence of our outside linebacker play. I think uh, Alex Bray and, and uh, Dennis Briggs inside have been very very uh, um, uh, big part. They're most productive players, uh, and in the development of T. Rod Edwards, I think inside really has helped us. But by far the biggest uh, change has probably come on the back end of, of the play of Miles Scott, Xavier Scott, uh, Tory Cox, uh, K- uh, Corey, uh, 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 Caleb Patterson. Um, T. Brooks has come around the last couple of weeks, so I think the, the development of the back end guys um, has been really probably the single biggest factor other than just getting the coys of a uh, unit of the coaching staff. What would you like about this past week, what was accomplished with the twos, threes, what team getting the reps? Well, it pays off this week, yeah. this year, a year from now. Well, I, you know, I made a point uh, on Wednesday and Thursday, you know, when we had a lot of reps, it was twos, twos, threes, threes, you know, the Debo guys were kind of in the threes, but you know, I, I've just been a part of this long enough. I was sitting there looking right at Art Sikowski, right? Like there's a, I just said, I challenged him on both days. There's a player right now on this field that just got the majority of the reps today that will have a factor in us winning a game uh, uh, this season, right? And and I don't know who it's going to be. I don't know how it's going to come about. It could be on the second play of the first quarter. It could be on the second play of the second half. It could be on the second to last play of the game. At some point, somebody in this group is going to have to step forward for us to get a, a win uh, in Big Ten play, and, and that's what I love about this environment. Is we have, you know, a four-game stretch of Big Ten opponents in front of us. Nothing more important than Purdue uh, for us to have success on Saturday is going to be about how we prepare our our, our ones, our twos, and, and really those fringe guys that, that help us in a variety of different ways. Coach, when you see a guy from your coaching tree you like Coach Walters, and the team struggling, how does that make you feel? And what would be your advice to kind of help? You know what? I appreciate the question, but I really don't. I, my my, um, when you're in season, right? I've had seven or eight guys become head coaches, right? Like I love them, you know, care about them, respect them, but you know, so entrenched. Even like last week, you know, like it's just everybody thinks by week, you know, but it, it's it's uh, you know, for myself, I was in town literally two nights during the six day stretch. Um, like you're just so emerged um, in what you're doing. Um, uh, we're playing Purdue, and that kind of brings it up, but it really is a non factor. Yeah, this is probably a little off the radar, but like we've seen like players, other schools, redshirt and kind of opt to redshirt, I guess. I'm yeah. just curious, do you have any thoughts on that and how, if at all, you consider maybe how you would handle it? Yeah, well, you guys obviously interviewed me last week and I brought it up for a reason, right? The whole <laughs> element of having five years of eligibility, I think, would eradicate kind of that problem. Um, but there are troubleshoot problems around that, too, right? If you include a fifth year and what that means. but. Oh, I, I would say it popped up in our building more than it's ever happened in my 16 years as a head coach, and not even a question. So um, some of those haven't come to light yet, but I haven't definitely had the conversations. Um, I, I think just the world that we're living in now, the, the social media awareness. Um, the other X factor is this whole COVID thing, right? Like, so you got guys that had extended high school careers because of COVID, right? And they got a, a, you know, we have guys that are in extended college careers because of COVID. So until this kind of window cleans up, I think you're going to, it kind of gets glorified a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, there's, you know, I always go back to like, even when I first came here, right? Like, you know, we all know how you do, you know, uh, science experiments when you're young, right? Like you control one factor, right? Like whether it's heat, whether it's freezing, whether it's a chemical, like when the science experiments come together, you got one <coughs> variable, you know what's going on. When you add two or three, right? You never know how the results are gonna play out. and. In college football right now, the the portal, the NIL, the changing world of NIL to revenue share, uh, the addition of a 105-man roster and maybe more scholarships or maybe not, um, uh, four years of eligibility versus five, uh, it's just it's just a bunch of variations and factors that are very hard to navigate as a head coach, but it's also what makes our job great. Brett, you mentioned T. Brooks. Just what has led him, in your mind, to continually, week by week, become more and more of a factor? Well, uh, it's probably a good question for, for uh, uh, Terrence, but you guys probably have been made mm-hmm. to Terrence, right? Um, um, I just think a guy that is, has come in, there's always going to be an adjustment factor to how we do things. We really don't um, vary on how we approach things. I do think we put a, a lot of, uh, in, in my opinion, a lot of thought into how we handle every player. Every player is a little bit different. They come in with a different resource, a different background. Um, I, I don't think you can, you know, paint every player with the same brush, but on the same account, you have to have some accountability to it, right? So I think, um, however, he came in, uh, the adjustments he's made, he's been very diligent. Corey Parker, I can't say enough about how he just handles every moment with, with, with Terrence and also Tory Cox. Like, 
and Caleb Patterson, like those are three guys that are playing a majority of the refs who didn't even see the field last year. And all three of those guys are playing extremely well. So, um, uh, and, and there's some Jaheim Clark, uh, 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 T. Strain, um, uh, just a lot of guys that I think have been listening, buying, and and and, and, and uh, uh, growing uh, without maybe reps on the field. But uh, I, I think the the best part about Terrence Brooks is everything that you've seen. It's only going to get better, and and last week was a good indicator of it. Did you get a chance to watch him football through the bye week? On Saturday, yeah. On Saturday, and what, what do you make of the Big Ten race and, and the race for the college football playoffs? Yeah, you know, um, as college football coaches, as college football players, I always encourage our staff and our players. Uh, the only way you can learn football is by watching football, right? And you're going to go through a lot of reps. Uh, but, um, you know, to sit back and Saturday, I, I was flying in Saturday morning from uh, recruiting, so I didn't get a chance to watch the beginning half, but I got in town uh, about quarter to 11, just in time to watch uh, the Purdue game, obviously at Wisco. Um, kind of channel served in the afternoon. Uh, was able to watch some, some stuff in the evening, which is, you know, to uh, have teams that we're going to play in the future, but also just learn college football. But. Yeah, I, I think, you know, the one thing that gets reinforced all the time is, you know, the teams that uh, take advantage of the opportunities they're given who can kind of rise out of the moments of success and, 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 and come out of the moments where there's been, you know, a, a little bit of a setback, those guys continue to win. So, um, you know, Big Ten race is, is, is unique in the fact that it's an 18-man race this year that's never been done before, and, and I think to be a part of that is pretty awesome. Um, uh, obviously, we had a setback at Penn State, but we're trying to take advantage of the opportunity we able to does it some scout for you guys to personnel and say, hey, can you yeah. competition? How does that kind of Well, I, I think two things, Jeremy. First, you know, what, did, what, what have we done well? And then identifying what we didn't do well, but why did that happen, right? Like I always, okay, uh, well, we did this. We had these many carries and we got this many yardage, right? Okay, that's great. That's a math equation, right? Now tell me why it didn't work, right? Or why it did work. Um, I think that's the part I always kind of stress to our coaches and our players, right? It's not the answer, it's the why, right? And, and um, I think to have a bye week after five games uh, and to have a, a bye week after, you know, a, a, a tough road game at Nebraska, a tough road game against Penn State, um, uh, it, it's it's uh, invaluable to have that bye week right there. Next year we got a two-game week, two game bye week as well, right? So that, I've just always felt that's the optimum season is to have a 12-game schedule with two bye weeks and, and – uh, this week it played into it, and, and it was interesting. I bumped into a road uh, on the road uh, to coach from Kentucky. Kentucky had the same thing; they had a five by four by, and just talked about the advantageous part of that is really good. Just a quick follow up on the five years of eligibility: is that, is that excluding medical redshirts? And do you, and more importantly, do you sense uh, other coaches who join you in that? that you, you yeah, so I became a head coach in 2006, and I distinctly remember in 2008 having a long conversation about the proposal to add a fifth year of eligibility. At that point, there was a lot of discussions about, you know, what that could entail, how it could play out. And then kind of the modification came to this whole, all right, let's give them four weeks uh, uh, to play, right? And then it doesn't count against them without penalty. Uh, and then after the first or second year of doing that, I remember Dabo Sweeney specifically saying, you know, can we get this to go to postseason play? Because they actually need it most, right? Dabo was on several years in a row as a, a college football playoff coach. And I, I just thought it was incredibly insightful right because you know here's a guy that you know that i'd witnessed it was when i was out of college football but um they needed more players at the end of the year just because that's when you you're, you know get the most depleted by injury and uh, so the ncaa listened at that point and granted uh, postseason play to be added into it so now it's four regular season games and unlimited in the postseason so it seems like we're trending to that direction so if you you know we're able to make postseason play let's say you get in the big 10 championship game or a championship game of your conference that's five now you go into a a, a, a a window where you need to win three college football playoffs right to, to, if you want to win and now you're you're talking about an eight game right so what's the difference between eight and 12 right like i mean it's just um it just in my opinion it makes too much sense um and then the way the medical red shirt like so we're dealing with that with ashton hollands right so ashton hollands who's now going to be uh, uh uh, actually tomorrow has surgery on his shoulder because he played in less than four games or four games or less in the first six games he should be able to qualify for a medical hardship and get that red shirt that medical uh, uh, season back even though he's already guaranteed or he took a, a, a planned red shirt year so there's all kinds of math that gets involved that's why I'm just kind of thinking five years uh, anybody can play and do what you do um, if there's an average, uh, opportunity to, to go for a six year that's an appeal but I think five would just clean it up for everybody. Given the results on Saturday, you know, number one loses to unrank, number four loses to unrank, 9, 10, 11 lose. It makes me think of this debate when NIL came in of like, are, are the rich going to get richer or are the other teams going to have a chance? 
Yeah. You think there's a read on that that can be made from like the results of college football right now? Well, just because it, it's on the forefront of my mind a lot, right? Like, um, uh, I give Josh uh, a lot of credit and our people. We've uh, made a jump there, uh, you know. And and but um, what I I foresee hopefully changing is you know like I think the lowest in our conference is at two million, the highest at twenty one million. That that's that's not good math, right? Like that just doesn't add up to. Um, things being equal, so I, I don't, I don't know exactly how the answer's got to come, except for I hope that we're always kind of in the top third, right? Because then we can kind of put ourselves in a position um, uh, to be competitive. Um, you know, for me as a head coach, I've always um, kind of taken this value is like, like I, I know every day when I wake up, I got 24 hours just like the other guy, right? And and how I use my time um, and how I evaluate and, and, and allocate our resources. As long as they're fair, like don't just tell me the rules and let me play, right? But when you get into these scenarios where things can be a little bit out of balance, right? Then, then uh, you know those those bring questions that sometimes they aren't just real clear cut answers. Um, and and I appreciate the question, but also, you know, I, I'm I'm not saying you want to have the highest number either, right? Because then there, you're dealing with situations and variables that um, probably come up on your radar. That it sounds silly, right? But when kids have uh, an unlimited income, or they have un, an unrestricted um, ability to spend money. Um, simple things like where they live, um, parking tickets, cars, uh, uh, um, uh, the ability to travel during a bye week, right? Do all kinds of things that have never been up on anybody's radar are, are now present, right? Like I started getting all these things about this guy's got a dog, right? And this guy's got a an apartment that doesn't allow dogs. Well, he's got to have a dog sitter while we're out of town, right? Like, I'm like, Jesus, <laughs> right? Like, just when you have new situations, new new uh, issues pop up, and it's a never-ending uh, uh, kind of chase in the uh, tail, or however you want to say it, right? Like, it, it's just, it's fun. Um, it's exciting. I, I love the maturity of our locker room. One of the things that I really think is advantageous that our, our coaches talk about all the time is the group of guys that we have. Um, you know, I'm not saying they're all, you know, roasting marshmallows at night ever together and singing Kumbaya, but I think our guys um, think right, act right, walk right. Um, the GPAs that we've had, uh, the lack of social issues off the field, right, like give us an understanding of what kind of character we have in the locker room. I think that's a lot of fun. We've been in part of games like the Florida so Sale the or shop. winning back the axe. Like, just what is it like as a player in these trophy games, and does that kind of change as a coach? Um, see, Florida Rosedale was a pig, right? Is it? Uh, yeah, it was high. Was was yeah. And, and uh, yeah, the, uh, the Axe, that's Paul Bunny, Axe, Minnesota, uh, Wisconsin, right? Um, so it's how old I'm getting, I can't remember them all, right? But like, I think as a player, they do they do mean, you know, a certain amount of value when you have them. Um, we've got an empty trophy case, right? Uh, that's that's um, the message to our guys, right? Um, we're guaranteed two games every year, Minnesota, uh, uh, Northwestern, and and Purdue, both of them are trophy games. Those didn't come by chance, right? So I think that's a, it's part of our conference. It's part of our history that I think is really cool. Um, but unfortunately, if you, again, I've never seen it, touched it, felt it, smelt it. Like I, I've never been able to hold that cannon, right? So until it's in our, our hands, all we do is talk about it, like, and, and see pictures of it. And, um, you know, I think that's a part of, of uh, being in this program, hopefully move forward. But I'm curious on the yeah. offensive line, like we've seen you guys rotate yeah. a few times this year and even in your past, do you feel like you're solidified coming out of the, that open week or are you still I kind think, of I think it's fair to say we feel solidified at certain positions, but you know, uh, where you've seen rotation, uh, there's there's opportunity to be in there. Um, uh, uh, I, I love uh, the fact that I think our guys uh, are their own hardest critics, right? So I think that, that they not only um, ask to be better, but they also expect each other to be better. So there's a lot of peer pressure. I think peer pressure works both ways, right? Like there's a certain amount of things we like to apply peer pressure to our kids um, and make them understand the standard that needs to be set. But the best peer pressure comes from within the locker room, right? If I, as a head coach, don't have to worry about the way people are motivated and play well, like that's a huge uh, step in the right direction. So I think our guys in particular, um, you know, uh, especially I, I showed them quotes from James, right? Like I, I, I'm, one of, I'm not going to, uh, shy away from what was said about us post game locker room, right? So to bring that to players' attention, I think is a very positive thing. Thank you, guys.